The governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, Ekiji State Governor, Kayode Fayemi, former national chairman of the party, Adams Oshomole, and others declare presidential ambitions, bringing the number to about 27, 17 of whom had picked 100 million naira for. And section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act as amended does not exist, says Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gotswil Akbabio. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The race for the presidential tickets of the all, uh, ruling All Progressive Congress APC continues as Ekiti State Governor Kayode Fayemi, the Central Bank Governor um, Godwin Emefiele, former National Chairman of the Party Adams Oshomole, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs Senator Gotswil Akwabio, and Jigawa State Governor Mohamed Baduru Abubakar have individually declared their intent to be the standard bearer of the party for the 2023 general elections. Altogether, over 15 individuals have declared their intentions to run and have picked up the required forms. Yet, the party has now extended its deadline for the sales of nomination and expression of interest forms. The ruling party has made about 1.23 billion naira from the sale of expression of interest and nomination forms to 17 presidential aspirants. Well, joining us to break this down and more is Bola Oba and Biodo Shomi, who both are political analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Great. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with you, um, Bola. It, it's very interesting when we see these many aspirants, many people declaring their intentions to run. And who knows, many more might just, you know, in the coming days continue um, to throw their hats into the ring. Uh, but, but then let's start by looking at the quality of the people who have so far uh, declared their interest. Yes, I'm asking, what do you think about the people who have joined the presidential aspiration so far? What do you think of the quality of these men, including the woman who has also joined? So, so, the question speaks to the fact that we are in a silly season, we are in a silly season of politics. And to be honest with you, uh, it shows more so to me that the incumbent must have dumped down the quality of the allot office so much that every refrap believes he or she, in so much as he or she could garner the funds, can go for it. Very pedestrian. Hmm. When you say every riffraff, uh, I'm looking at the, the people who have so far joined that race in the APC, by the way. Um, can, we, can you really qualify them with that term? I mean, we've had former Senate presidents, we've had um, former governors, we've also seen former party leaders. Uh, do they really qualify as riffraffs or Tom Dix and Harry? Former, former party leader who was decapitated in a manner putting on uh, a comical production. You forgot now he was decapitated from the sea. A former Senate leader in another party, I guess I'm not talking about the ruling party. And the Senate leader, whilst he was still on the allot seat of the Senate leader, even lost, lost his state. So, um, if that does not speak to something to you, for you, it does for me. Hmm. Interesting. Let me come to you, be able to show me. Let's, okay. look at, let's look at the quality again, like I asked, of the people who have thrown their hats into the ring so far. I mean, Balaba has said that he, he feels that it's a come one, come all affair for the APC. Many have said that this is some form of um, money-making scheme for the ruling party, and this might empower them, uh, you know, when it's time for the main race in itself. But what are your thoughts? Well, uh, <clears throat> well, um, there are different ways you can move this. 
um, in the first instance is the party deliberately encouraging so many aspirants to come out um, with a view to uh, make some money, raking money. Uh, that's one way. The other way is, is it about the other game plan? When it comes to the quality of the candidates, um, it depends on what you mean, what, um, what our own understanding of government. Many of them are well experienced in the art of governing Nigeria, and I'll call it like that, um, in the sense that um, they've been holding political offices, and some are still holding offices still now. Um, we have so many of them interested in protesting for the person. One thing which I found strange is that we've never had this the large of presidential candidates in our political history. Uh, even prior to 1999, you know, we've never had it. Um, so therefore, we need to understand exactly what is really going on. Is it about the political party wanting to make money or about something else? In my view, I think it's about something else. I don't think it's about making money um, uh, because at the end of the day, whatever money they are making, one or two people within that um, setup, uh, amongst those who are applying, can pay, you know, donate that uh, amount of money. So I don't think it's about that. I think it's about a, a different game plan. You need to go look at the is issue, you know, um, from an historical perspective. Look at the situation when the 17 Southern governors declared that the presidency was compulsory. And then look at the rehearsal of the Northern Governors of the M. And then we find a situation where APC, as a political party, decided that the chairman chief of the party should be zoned you know, to the North. Knowing that once a Northern occupies that post, then there is no way a Northern will be the best pleasure country. Now, when it comes to the South, so many people have been encouraged to come out, and also people you know, from the North have been encouraged to come out. What I see happening is a situation where the president is determined, you know, to have a consensus candidate. If you have so many candidates out who are holding, you know, their own territory, it will be difficult for anyone, you know, to have 50% of the votes in a particular zone. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, if the constitution has actually broken it all down to zones, and if increase the local government um, the delegates from local government from three to five. Mm. So therefore, it to be impossible for any particular aspirant to win the ozone. So this will compel negotiations. And uh, that is when the presidency will come in, the leadership of the party will come in, and then choose um, whoever they want as a consensus candidate, and then they will be able to get the necessary backing for the person. But we should not forget what the electoral acts is. If one candidate disagrees, then the consensus option they're working on may not work. So mm -hmm. it depends on what they're trying to do. Uh, but what I see is exactly what I've done. I don't see it as a money making venture. I see it as part of the game plan on choosing the next presidential candidate uh, from the APC who may be compliant you know, to the interests of the power of Okay. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Oba. Um, show me saying that this might be a tactic of sorts to finally get all the aspirants to, you know, come to a consensus. But uh, do you see a, some confusion erupting as a result of this game plan if it does not necessarily work? Being that, we're seeing more and more uh, people emerge from the South. Uh, and less people from other regions, like he has said, they have zoned the offices uh, to the north, of course. Now, the south, obviously, are the ones who are at play. But do you see a smooth sail in this particular game plan? Or are there other things that, uh, other permutations that you see in the future? I want to congratulate Shoumi for the overstretch of his uh, public intellect. The tourism is trying to rationalize the madness that is happening in the APC now. This, the best explanation for me is money laundering. The party needs money. They go out to encourage, you know, every character who they believe could be could be used to articulate the money laundering exercise. And basically, it's just a festival of plutocracy. Uh, that uh, permutation consensus. There is no consensus mechanism 
in the APC Presidential Convention Constitution. In the Constitution of APC, there is no consensus for their presidential convention. But, has to be but this is how President, but this is how President Buhari emerged in the first instance. So, I mean, are you saying that the party no, was just no, 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 factually wrong, madam. Go check but, your facts. But it was it was some On form of a two. consensus. There was an agreement of no. sorts for President Buhari no, to be no, the no, no, the no, flag bearer no, of the party. Are, you are historically and factually wrong. Go and check your facts. In 2014, at Slim Balogun, there was a contestation. In 2018, there was direct, although although opponents did not come out, but there was direct primaries across Nigeria, so-called direct primaries. And I'm telling you authoritatively now, you go research it after or get your research persons to do it for you. There is no consensus instrument in how the APC chooses is presidential candidate. It must be either direct or indirect primaries. And once it is not in the constitution, I wonder how that could be articulated. I'd also like to correct you that there is consensus within the APC's constitution. You can go there check it. There is consensus in the general convention. Listen, yes. listen carefully. There is consensus in the general convention. But in the presidential election convention, there is no consensus. The two are different, my sister. Mm -hmm. Go check it. The two are different. So you're saying that there will not be any consensus at the end of the day. So are you envisaging that there will be a confusion, who, you know, in picking who becomes the flag bearer at the end yeah, of the day? Or the, 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 we will all fall back to direct primaries, will we? My sister, you don't necessarily have to have a confusion confusion. There are two outstanding mechanisms. They have ruled out one. They said they are not using direct primaries, but they also have indirect primaries. Indirect primaries is like electoral college mechanism where delegates elected from their wards to their local governments, to their states, under, we know how this thing works in Nigeria, under the control of the governor, and in states without governor, under the control of somebody with a deep pulse, would go to a convention center, a presidential convention center, not general convention center, go to a convention center to cast their votes for the person, the can, uh, aspirant of their choice. Okay. And we know that that is the bazaar. The, the issue from when Moshud Abiola articulated the use of money at the just convention of the SDP in 1992, when you hear presidential conventions of parties, delegates are going for bazaars and they want to come home with money. Okay. But back to you, show me. It's interesting, um, the position of Bolaho. But he's saying um, that this is it's going to boil down to indirect primaries. Now, we know that the con Congresses are coming up uh, in a bit. Uh, they're getting ready for that. Um, but then they have also pushed back the dates for the sale of forms. Even though INEC has come out to say, well, the primaries, the dates for the primaries are unshakable, it's sacrosanct, they're not going to move it. Um, what do you think the the primary the congresses are going to what shape and form do you think it will take? Yes, there will be congress. Um, we should understand one thing. When we talk about consensus, the fact of the matter the electoral act as amended allowed for three methods of choosing candidates. One, direct primaries. Two indirect primaries. The third one is consensus. This was debated, you know, in the whole country. The president actually insisted on having that consensus, you know, inserted before the electoral act was actually signed up. So mm -hmm. therefore, any party, including the APC, that chooses to adopt the consensus of it, will not be violating the electoral act. And I think that's the most important point um, in, in in this matter uh, mm -hmm. because the, the party constitution is not superior to the Electoral Act or 
the conclusion of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is a statement of fact. Now, back to your question. They will have Congress. We know that will be us trading. We know that so many candidates all around there. But why, why are they all coming out? You begin to ask it, sir. Even those who are sure that their tentacles will not extend beyond their states are also coming out. The reason is there's a game platform. Um, while the APC is harvesting money through that, including PDP, all the parties are harvesting money for me, uh, the major parties. But the fact of the matter is, I don't see this just about making I see this as part of the process that will lead to the Congress, uh, whereby a form of negotiations will take place. I don't think that will succeed, in my view. I don't see all the candidates agreeing on one person, but they are all out to represent different interests, you know, and which is very clear to me. Uh, we, we cannot uh, remove, you know, the influence of the presidency in uh, what you are beginning to see, because the, 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 the cabal behind it all in the presidency, you know, also have their own picket mm. amongst all these candidates. So obviously, uh, this is to enable discussions. There is anxiety about what would happen after Buhari, would there be restructuring, you know, anxiety about um, the fate of the country and all that. And uh, the powers that be would only um, swing their support towards um, their own interests. I think there are a lot of other issues which um, are playing on behind this, uh, the, the, the trick. But in order to have a, you know, in order to have a major influence, you really need to have so many people in the race and people who you can count on their votes, you know, uh, in order to influence whoever the president wants. Mm. As, um, they can. I don't see the Weber that would emerge would be a true reflection of what all the delegates want. Paula uh, is right on one point, that the fact that uh, money would um, uh, exchange hands, is that the fact? Uh, you know, delegates would get some form of um, um, monetary stomach infrastructure from me. That's a fact. But at the end of the day, all the candidates are comfortable enough, you know, to, to do that. But I don't see that as a major issue. I think I think the major issue is actually the political agenda which they are trying to foster. It's not about financial returns or reward or money going into APC budget. Quickly, before I go back to uh, Bolova, I, I want to ask a question about the um, presidential aspirants meeting that was supposed to take place, the Southern presidential aspirants meeting that was supposed to take place uh, that was all of a sudden um, cancelled. Um, there are people who had said that, look, this meeting would have, you know, given the Southwest some form of uh, a vantage point of sorts. Looking again at all of the people who have come out from the Southwest, I mean, let's also not forget that we've also had some people from the South-South, like uh, the Minister for Transportation. Um, we've also had the, uh, the Minister for Niger Delta. Uh, we may not have so many people from the South-South, but then the Southwest meeting canceled abruptly. Um, in looking at all of these Southwesterners, and now let's look at votes. Let's look at how... Uh, the handshake across, you know, from here to other regions. How powerful or which candidates do we think that if if that meeting were to hold, would be able to, um, you know, spread its tentacles across, right across the country to be able to win that um, seat for the APC? Is that for me? Or yes, for it's for you. Oh, yeah. When you look at... Um, the handshake plan across the South, what's the essence? The essence is to pull down candidates in a way that it will be manageable and Southwest will be able to present, you know, a common. And I think it's exactly the same thing that the South, South of South is intended to do. Now the one for South West has been cancelled due to distrust and um, questions are being raised by um, uh, some of those who speak for Mr. Um, Vice President, while others were on. Uh, in the Southwest, um, the agenda is very clear. The candidates are very clear. Um, I think nobody can deny the fact that Tinubu is a major factor in the Southwest and is in the race. So, also, we also have the Vice President, who also is a sitting Vice President. And when it comes to those people with 10 tackles, you know, uh, across the whole country, 
um, I think um, Tinubu probably, given the length of time he's been on the scene and given his role in the past, I think, and being the national leader of uh, APC, I think he's in a very good position. But at the same time, if a sitting vice president cannot be dismissed as not having influence across the country. I think he does have influence, you know, across the country. So I can see both of them as probably leading candidates in the start. Mm. Um, same question for you, Mr. Oba. What do you think um, was at the... Before, before I go to that question, let me put this emphatically. Emphatically. The electoral act, as I mentioned, or the electoral act, the amended electoral act 2022 allows consensus as one of the instrumentalities of choosing party leaders and choosing candidates of parties. But having said that, the electoral act does not overrule the constitution of the party. If the constitution of the parties, as in the case of the APC, clearly defines the mechanisms for the selection or nomination of their candidate, and it overrules consensus, the fact that the provision is in the electoral act does not automatically impute it. So let's put that aside. Okay. Now, in the case of your specific question, I want to ask who is the most resourced Southwestern candidate? Indeed, at this juncture, who is the most resourced Southern candidate? Plus, including as the uh, as Chief Debugaya would say, plus including the vice president. The person that has, the person that has nurtured the, the networking assets over the years, the person that has the deep pocket, it may not be the most ideal candidate for the most ideal character for most of us, but you know what? Your question has framed is actually slanted in favor of one person from the South. And we are talking to a man who indeed believes that we should be microzoning at this juncture to the southeast of Nigeria. Because there is fear. Since 1960, when we attained our flag and anthem independence, a southeasterner has only ruled by accident or circumstance for only six months, six months, six calendar months, and we have this opportunity wanting to use the argument of equity and fairness for the North to subsume its majoritarianism, its natural instincts for majoritarianism, subsume it for rotation because of equity and fairness. And yet, if you are a Southwesterner, intellectual, well exposed, with a mind respecting the fact that for Nigeria to be sustainably prosperous as a, as a single political entity, we need to find a mechanism such as Nigeria did in 1999. Since we're talking to about the APC the here, the since we're talking about the APC here, and let's let's zoom into the southeastern candidates who have so far declared interest. I mean, Audrey Zorkalo pulled out midway, um, so all we have left uh, is um, the uh, I think a Boeing state governor at some point had thrown his hat into the ring, and um, I think we have a former Senate leader. So, I, I, I don't know. okay, the, the, yes, the incumbent minister, the incumbent so, minister of, of science and technology, yes. who was once a governor, yes. But then let's look at those people, the, the caliber of the people that have come out from the Southeast. And of course, their voting power, the, the block power that they have in terms of swaying the votes, if the party were to say, well, let's zone this to these people. And I'm not in any way making a case against the Southeast, but I'm saying we have more people from the Southwest 
and the, and then less people from the south south and the southeast if we were to, if we were to go by the numbers if the PD, if the apc were to go by the numbers how encouraging are the people from the southeast within the party who uh, want to run for that office I, i'm basically telling you that at this juncture at this juncture there are about six characters from the southeast who are, who are including including for me a comical character as the as the minister of state who was the first to actually collect the party's form. Mr. Oba, I, I don't think you answered my question, but because we do not have too much time, let me quickly go back to um show me quickly. He's making a case for the South East. Yesterday we had um two days ago we had um a, a guest from the north who said that the people from the southeast are not ripe in his words exactly that they're not ripe for this office he also said that if we were to say let's give power to the southeast who are the people to be given i i asked him why uh, well he also said that the confusion in the southeast is is also making them unprepared for the position of presidency and and he said well if we were to say let's zone it to the southeast well, where where, where are the people the Exactly. Well, I'm just asking. I'm just asking him a question. Now that we're all asking yes. and angling for the southeast, how many should we not have a million? Just as we're having as many people from the southwest also vying for this office and showing that they're really interested uh, in this office. You have about six. You have about six presently. How, how much? How much can you have when you have Africans? This this question is for show me quickly before we go. Well, well, well. The way I see it. Uh, you first take the broad principle of equity and fairness. There should be no nationality in Nigeria. There should be ruled out, you know, or ruled him, you know, uh, from contesting for any post in this country. Uh, because if we say we're a country made up of ethnic nationalities, uh, we have to ensure that we have an arrangement a political arrangement that would encourage everybody to have a sense of belonging. That is the primary reason why in the Constitution we have the principle of federal character so that all the states would have a sense of belonging. Whether the president likes it or not, he has to appoint a minister from his state of the federation. So when you're talking about the political leadership of the country, it is not the exclusive preserve of any ethnic group, the Southeasterners should also have a right to aspire, you know, uh, and uh, nobody should deliberately work against them on account of being from Southeast. Now, I understand that democracy is a game of government. We have had agitations about people wanting to leave Nigeria, particularly in the South. Yes, to some extent in the Southwest, the growth factor is there. The fact of the matter is you cannot say we don't want them to be president. Well, at the same time, we don't want them to go. You know, that's a contradiction. But then, but, then all, but, but, then all we see, but then all we see within the parties, we see all of the, the movements within the parties are not necessarily looking like it's going to favor the Southeast. And this is why I asked that question. We're not seeing that much attention for, for towards the southeast we only yes. hear we only hear agitations we hear people saying you need to give your ticket to people in the southeast but the parties in themselves don't seem to be going in that direction the apc and the pdp in fact the pdp has thrown his party ticket open so really are we just paying lip service to this issue and again the people from the southeast how eager are they to run for these offices it's not enough to say we want power but are they showing that they want to ho grab hold of these seats yeah, for obvious reasons, if you look at the APC, for obvious reasons, uh, Wari said it when he came into office. I can't recall whether you remember uh, when he was freshly elected in 2015. I think he went to the U.S. where he said, uh, uh, he spoke about those who gave him 90% of the vote and those who gave him 5% of the vote, something along that line. Yeah. You know, more or less hinting at the Southeast that... that um, um, is going to concentrate his attention on where he got more votes from than uh, the southeast. So, and that's precisely the situation. So, since then, it's, if not for the federal character principle, I doubt whether he would have appointed 
you know, sound system and has into his government. Now, uh, so one would expect that they are not well favorably disposed to within the APC, given the disposition of the president, except he has had a change of mind. Okay. But that is just it. It doesn't resolve any problem because no matter what we do, we must ensure justice and fairness. If okay. we say a section of the country is precluded from political power, there is going to be a problem at the end of the day. Well, uh, we are out of time. I want to say thank you to Bola Oba and, of course, um, uh, Bjorda Shomi. Thank you very much, both our political analysts. Thank you for being part of this conversation. I think that the conversation about the Southeast presidential ticket needs to be continuous. Uh, but thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Gospel Akwabu, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, says that um, Section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, as amended, does not exist. Well, this is up for discussion right after this break.